Am I okay? <laughs> yes, you're fine. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so hello, everybody. Hello, every. I don't know. My voice. Ugh, my accentos. Blooper number one. Beep. Hello. <laughs> okay, Hello Mena. and welcome to another episode of Player Bin Chat. No, no. This is Sauron speaking. Maybe, maybe when uh, I'm a special guest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was very nice to meet you, Sauron. Thank you for coming aboard. Yes, I would like to discuss how it was really unfair for the people of Middle yes. Earth. Yes, I know, I know. You really wished to take to take over, didn't you? They they treated me like Hitler in your yes. Europe. Yes, I know, I know. Well, he had he had what was coming to him, and you had what was coming to you, and um, so now it's time to stop being a stick in the mud and just accept what happened. Okay. I, w- I was looking out for all the minorities. Yeah, well, the, it wasn't your job to do that. Um, minorities were doing just fine. Stop it, get off. Well. <laughs> You know, sometimes I I can say that Gandalf's decisions were questionable, but um, so were yours. So he, he cheated. He used egos in the end. Like he could have used them before, but no, he said, "Yes, Let's yes, do it I before. know." It's a, it's a sore point with all the fans of the of the franchise. So Sauron, please let's not get the fans riled up, okay? Thank you. Those are my fans. You're my fans. Well, well, yes. A lot of them do I cosplay as you, so. You. Yes, yes. Um, thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. That was Sauron. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, adventurers, to the podcast that goes through everything gaming with your hosts, Benji and Donchap. Wherever you're listening in, get ready to shuffle those cards, roll the dice, and count your victory points because this is Play Up and Chat. <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Play Up and Chat. This is Don Chap with you. And this is me, Benji. And today's episode we're going to be discussing storage. Storage. Yeah, storage of your board games. It is an interesting topic. Um, a lot of people overlook storing board games and what to do with board games when and after they buy them. But we're going to go through the ins, the outs, the what, the hows. What not to. And what to do. So uh, stick around for our episode. So before we get started, everybody, uh, as usual, we just like to remind you, if you like what we do uh, in all aspects of PlayUp, you can support us directly through our Patreon, which is patreon.com slash playupmt. And you can support us for as little as three euro per month. Every little bit counts towards the supports for everything that we do here. Yes, in actual fact, listeners, you are we are coming to you, not live, but recorded from our newly set up recording studio. We got all this uh, wonderful equipment in here that we managed to bring on board to increase the quality of the the podcast now without further ado let's jump straight into the topic so storage of board games you want to kick us off don yeah sure so um it really depends first and foremost about how big your collection is if you just got a couple of board games um, you might want to just first and foremost never store them in a place which is humid you don't want to place your board games which is humid because they end up either getting moldy or you know, they get to warp and all this stuff. Uh, mind attracts even unwanted pests, such as, you know, bugs and so stuff. So that's the first rule ever about storing whatever collection of board games you have. Yeah, I remember that uh, board games are, you know, made of cardboard and paper, essentially, down to the bare items, which loves humidity. You know, it just absorbs all of that moisture out of the air. So... Um, uh, a good non-humid place, you know, possibly, uh, I, I actually prefer to keep them inside a cupboard, like closed up. And there are, you know, those little silica gel packets that you can get. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like to put a couple of those here and there w- inside the cupboard as well, because that draws all the moisture within those tiny little packets. Obviously, you have to remember to change them every so often, you know, so that it doesn't... And they don't cost you a buck. I yeah. mean, you know, on the internet nowadays, you can find those in, in uh, large quantities and just buy them in bulk and just uh, have them re- at the ready to store with your board games. Usually a board game comes at least with one packet, depending on the size of the board game. Yeah, they usually do. You'll find them in the, in the, the box at the very bottom there underneath. And um, they're, you, they're really handy. You can get them in a, lo- a load of other products as well. So we suggest keeping them until you need them. 
yeah, just don't throw them away. Those are essential for your storage purposes. I personally like to keep them out in the open mostly. So basically, uh, when you come and see my collection, it's just basically an open shelf, which costed me like 30 euro per shelving stand, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. The, and again, I had to find a corner inside the house, which is not humid because, you know, I didn't want to damage myself. Now, also, what could help prevent this, but it's not a 100% guarantee, is actually buying the protective stuff for your board game. Be it sleeves, be it uh, plastic packaging and stuff like that. Again, yeah. it's not a guarantee. It just helps with, you know, storing the items and protecting them. Yeah, most of the time I find that uh, things like protective sleeves work a lot more for, uh, you know, usage rather than just solo storage. Um, don't get me wrong, there are some really great plastic storage units and even 3D printed units that you can get and you can put inside the box itself to store the miniatures, have the cards and all the components stored nicely so that they don't move around in the box. And it's actually a really good uh, idea to perhaps invest in something like that because not a lot of board games do come with, let's call it, efficient storage units with inside the box. Like a lot of miniatures do come in plastic, but the plastic sometimes is oversized. Uh, usually you get your tiny little baggies to put your all your small components like dice and tokens. But sometimes still, you know, they're moving around a lot all over the place and these 3D printed units work actually really, really well. Something that I'd like to pick up since you mentioned this, usually, personally, I prefer if I had everything compartmentalized inside the board game. Yeah. And which leads us to the next thing about storing your board games. Do you store them on top of each other or side by side? A lot of people I see on the internet like to store them side by side. Now, this would be amazing if things didn't just kind of just slip out of their place and start running around. So perhaps they can afford doing so if they have the right packaging inside with the right protection and, you know, what you mentioned. I personally like to st stack them on top of each other. However, I found out through experience that sometimes the weight of each board game starts digging into the other. So the board game box packaging starts getting indented with the weight. Oh, yeah, I have that problem as well. Like, uh, I really try to be careful to have the same size kind of board games on top of each other and not a smaller box on top of a bigger box because cardboard over time it does you know tend to to sag a little bit and not all board game boxes are made of that really heavy duty go the extra mile i like to call it cardboard that is really heavy stock which can which can withstand the weight you know and actually commenting on what you just said don about people who stand up the the board game boxes mm -hmm. i'm gonna have to be honest it's it's a little bit of a pet peeve of mine because <laughs> i know how the components of the board game inside the box move around even even when the boxes are flat you know and you're picking up a board game and putting them back in because you want to get one that's underneath another one and they they, they move around anyway so how explain to me how someone can stand up a board game and not feel the anxiety of all the pieces moving around inside i can't i can't i i yeah i agree with you there simply because even for me like every time that i had the board game stand upright in that way for some reason or another the minute i pull out the board game and you know unpack it basically i have mostly either cards i think cards are, are the worst part about this cards start running around you have to kind of collect them you know, uh, find th their place, especially if you have a variety of different use for different cards. So I don't know. Um, it, it just, it, for me, I prefer them stacked on top of each other. And again, it's like you said, I, I would like to keep them within the same kind of size on top of each other just for that reason, just not to have things running around. That, that's the only thing. If someone can go ahead and reply in the comments for a suggestion how I could avoid this, I mean, yeah, I, I guess we kind of answered our own question there earlier, like having a certain amount of packaging and all that stuff. But sometimes you can't really afford it. I mean, yeah, yeah. you know, or you don't find the right size packaging or it just bulks things worse. So sometimes you want to take out the original packaging of it, you know, that plastic that comes with where the components go and replace it with your own that kind of close up appropriate. I guess those are the solutions as well. But 
if I wanted to avoid all that, or at least I don't have an answer for beginners who kind of can't afford it either, you know, just want to get the board game and start, you know, playing it, packing it as it comes without any extra expenditures. Like, how, how, how do you solve that? I don't know. <laughs> okay, I have a question for you. And it might sound ridiculous, mm-hmm. but rubber bands. Rubber bands, I had used them for a particular board game. And the only problem with rubber bands with cards is that it, it tends, due to the restriction, it tends to warp the cards. And not only that, but sometimes they leave like these sharp edges. It depends on what rubber bands as well. But like the common ones, the really thin ones, they tend to cut straight yeah, on the side. Yeah, I agree. And, and not only not only that with me with rubber bands. However, over time, the rubber... I'm not sure whether it's just uh, over time or because of usage or because they just stay stretched still. But I find a lot of rubber bands that kind of disintegrate a little bit like the plastic uh, or the rubber within the rubber band doesn't hold anymore and if you're unlucky and that is directly on the card it usually leaves uh, like a permanent stain or a mark on Uh, top of the card especially with our our conditions here on our island i mean we're from from malta and um, we've mentioned this i think a couple of episodes past most of our seasonal weather is hot weather so what happens is usually if you don't store this stuff properly in the right conditions um even if you do actually coming to think of it because I'm, I'm thinking like the first time i stored my board games was actually in the cupboard um with the heat itself and here it can get, get quite hot fast it can. And can reach certain temperatures it does end up destroying the rubber band to the point where it kind of almost melts the item mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah know? i hate it when that happens because and he, and even as time goes by, like with if you haven't played a board game for a long time, and sometimes that's what happens with certain board board games, you buy them and it stays kind of on the shelf for a while before you feel like picking it up again. Um, it tends to deteriorate, you know, the, the, and stick onto the item it, it's currently binding. So it's not my go-to. I actually try to avoid it at all costs, rubber bands, because of that. I remember I had a large Pokemon collection. And, oh yes, yes. And they got ruined because of this. So yeah, not, definitely not, not my go-to. No, not, not mine either. And that's why uh, I wanted to bring it up because um, it's something that we would refrain from doing mainly because, and I I think it's a point we haven't mentioned yet. But you know, there are different kinds of uh, people in the board game space. There are those who are more leaning towards collecting the games, and there are those who lean to more towards uh, playing the game. You know, and then there's a mix of of both. However, the collectors tend to be a little bit more... How do I put this, Don? You know, because they're collectors, you know, they want to keep the item pristine as much as possible, keep it in mint condition. Yeah, definitely. And the players are more concerned about, you know, playing the game and getting all that they can from the game. So really and truly how they store their game is not, uh, not really a question. I'm pretty sure there are like DIYs on how to solve the solution. Uh, you just have to go about going into them and seeing what they suggest, to be honest with yeah, you. Yeah, definitely. It's, uh, there are all kinds of forums. And I mean, Reddit is a great place to go in and, and talk with like-minded people and like-minded community. But talking about community, the best community that we can offer to you guys, the listeners, is in fact our Discord. On our Discord channel, we we have a lot of people that kind of give in their opinions. They help out in a positive, constructive manner how to go about uh, solving certain problems you might have within your hobby related issues they're quite a friendly community i'm I'm really happy with the community we have on discord so if you want to get part of that um, do join our patreon and you will have access through there alternatively if you know someone within our community they could invite you in no problem so we're quite open doors for everyone to join yeah uh, it's a great community and it's growing steady and the amount of uh, the amount of great people in there really creating a good community so going back straight on to the um, uh, the shelving part right so one from experience one thing you should avoid is this very cheap uh storage unit which is made out of wood usually um i would avoid searching like these thin wooden pallet kind of uh storage places shelvings simply because the weight of the board game believe it or not once you start collecting one on top of the other will actually start to bend you remember mine 
Ben. Yeah, I do. I my remember first, yours. My first storage unit started to bend, and I was really worried it was going to, you know, actually collapse at some point. So I had to go ahead and find some industrial strong shelving unit. Yeah, I mean that's the problem with wood. Um, unless the wood shelf is supported underneath by some, you know, metal or something, the wood always is going to end up warping. Um, uh, unless, of course, you know, you're going to stay taking it off and rotating it every couple of weeks to avoid that kind of thing but you know that's 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 a bit of a hassle we've already got board games that we want to take off the shelf and you know care for and maintain so why do we have to do that with the shelf as well right yeah so you want to avoid all that what i would suggest is these really heavy duty plastic shelves they take about 50 kilos each uh i bought them you know the whole thing was like 30 euro per um per unit uh so 60 euro in total um it, it it's really good i like it. it it's heavy duty yes once again i'm seeing kind of the plastic warp under the weights you know kind of doing but at least i know that it's not going to collapse because the structure underneath so you can actually see kind of like these support linings yeah to indeed. take that weight so i'm fine with that the only problem that i have with it per se is that once you start building a certain height, which is not meant to, by the way, but I decided to go that extra mile, um, it starts getting wobbly. <laughs> That's well, well, of course, if, if you're going to go up high like that without any uh, cross, cross-sectional cross support to hold the height, then it might get a little wobbly. But I like actually the setup that you've got going on for yourself. Um, and continue talking about shelves. There is actually an interesting um, board game storage shelf uh, unit that is actually specifically designed for board games that I've seen that I have to admit I like, but I don't like. And I'll give you the reasons why. I like it because each board game has got its own individualized compartment, and you can just slide them in, slide them out, and that's great. There's no warping on top of the board game, there's no extra weight, but I don't like them because it's out in the open completely. Absolutely, completely out in the open. Open from all sides, front, back, left, right, up and down, and... Is it like the one that X Geek Paradise had? Yes, exactly. That's the one. I remember so had it in how, the how can can we describe it so people can visualize what we're looking at? Okay. So, so it's like a grid. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's like a grid, and there are there's compartments. It's like individual shelving units, you know, like but space for just one board game at a time in one shelf. So you slide your board game in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and okay. you and then you can take it out and play whenever you want. You can slide it back in, and each one is specifically designed space for one board game. All right. The only problem it's not again since my board games are out in the open as well. So like you prefer them if they're stored inside some kind of glass cabinet, like I had back in my pre. Yes, you know, exactly. Bachelor apartment. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't have a problem with it being exposed like that per se unless of course and we, uh, we kind of can mention it in a bit about animals um i don't have a problem because it's exposed i have more of a problem because it can look messy okay i mean don't get me wrong i know my board game shelf is not exactly the most organized board game shelf out there but at least i can say okay you know the big board games go on the bottom you know, the medium-sized board games, the standardized size board games can go in, like in the middle shelvings, and then like the small stuff, which is easy to pick on the very top. The only thing that I don't like about that specific shelving that you mentioned is simply because it's kind of all over the place. Unless you somehow make it visually appealing, at least the way he, he designed it in his game store, it was very much all over the place. Then again, I mean, it's a game store, people pick it out, put it wherever. Yeah, exactly. People pick up and... Uh pick up a board game, play it, put it back wherever they find the space. I mean, I liked it because, as you mentioned, if you take the time to plan out where all the board games go and slot them in, I have to be honest, it is designed for larger board game boxes and rather than small party games, and maybe that is why it might look messy because of the smaller games tucked inside the individual units. However, the problem I have with being it out in the open, you know, not tucked away, yeah, is exposed. the dust. I hate dust. Absolutely hate with a passion. And we live in, in on an island, as we said, in Malta, and the go-to building um, uh, resource here is, you know, our limestone. And our limestone is it's, it's notorious. It, is, it does build a, a lot of nice, great houses. However, the dust 
that comes off of this kind of stone is absolutely insane. And to to have I uh, you know to have a, a, a number of board games out and then all this dust collecting on top. That's 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 another pet peeve of mine. I'm gonna say it. Yeah, I guess it's specific towards our community. You know, locally at least, I can see that. The only reason why I'm not so bothered by it because my board games are exposed. Right, it gives me the opportunity that once a month I get to pull them out. You know, dust them off and rearrange them accordingly. You know, this is not the first time people just kind of pull out whenever you guys come over to mine and just pull out a board game and then put it wherever. You know, so if it was stacked on the very bottom for a specific reason because it's you know stacked up the way it should be and then just stacking it up on the top like at some point i have to rearrange the whole thing so i can see your con on having them exposed yes i agree for me it's not so much as a pet peeve as much as for you because it gives me the opportunity to rearrange my board games however you know what's really cool ben yeah i've seen this guy on tiktok um showing off his board game shelf and somehow in some way, this guy managed to color code each section. No way. That was so pleasing to watch. Like every, you know, the red board games together, the green board games together. And it's more than the front cover. It's more the exterior. So the, the, the side of the board game. So he stocks them upright, like the way we, okay, we yeah, don't like yeah. it. <laughs> the way we don't like. <laughs> um, but he does it so beautiful. Aesthetically, it looks amazing. It, it is so easy on the eyes that's know. so cool oh man i would so wish to see um uh, how how he put he managed to put that together because um i'll, I'll forward you the tiktok one yeah if definitely. i find it again definitely i'd love to see that because you know color coding just takes storage all to a whole new level um uh, i mean people might think of storing you know well there's loads of ways you could do it alphabetically a to z you could do it um game type you know I, like I really party don't. games action games rpgs you could you could do that but color coding is so much more visual on the eyes and so much more pleasing I think it's easier to store them by size, to be honest. And I think it's a get it is a go to for every board game collector and every, you know, uh, by size of the box rather than alphabetically. To be honest with you, <laughs> you could do it by size of the box and alphabetically. This guy just goes the extra mile and he he does it by color. And then he has the most played board games or the bigger the biggest size board games kind of displayed on top. That's an interesting strategy. Yeah, of course, because if you're going to be having uh, to move around a lot of games to get to the game that you play the most, that might be a bit annoying as well. Of course, yeah. Another way to store your board games is making sure you have space, guys. That's that's the essential. Sometimes, and I know people don't usually have spaces because you know not every apartment, not every house has the relevant space to you know, put in shelvings of board games and stuff. I remember I had this issue and I quarreled a lot with my, my wife about it in my previous apartment. We had a very small apartment. We moved to a much bigger one, thankfully, since we had the kid. So sometimes you end up not knowing where to put these board games. So you might want to store them somewhere which is safe, so easy access and all that. However, there's one of our friends... And I think he he follows up <laughs> follows us on play up. So I'm really sorry if we're mentioning you. We're not going to mention your name. Um, we mentioned him like in the first episode or second episode. The guy who stores the board game in his car. Oh my! The guy who stores his board game in his don't car. store your board games in your car. First and foremost, I mean, if they're exposed, it might attract people to want to break into your car. And there yeah, are there are crazy people like that. Oh yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, if. If you walk by, <laughs> I was gonna, <laughs> I was almost going to implicate ourselves there, Don. But yes, if you got really, really, you know, enthusiastic board game collectors and they walk by a car, you know, your car is maybe, let's say your window's half cracked open because it's windy and I don't know, I don't know what, and you see the board game right there and it's something you've been after for so long, collector's edition. I mean, who isn't gonna <laughs> jump in and take it? <laughs> Second of all, especially for our local listeners, right? The temperatures here are just stupid, crazy hot for the majority of the season. You're, we mentioned this earlier in the episode. You're going to, you know, you're going to have problems with that. Your board games are going to warp and they're going to lose color. They're going to, there's so many problems with it. Like, hey, I can understand where he's coming from because 
maybe you want to be that guy who's always got um, a game handy. Let's say, you know, you're, you're going out, you're meeting friends. Well, maybe not in today's age with the pandemic and, and, and whatnot. But after this is all over, um, perhaps if you're one of those people who meets up with a lot of groups of people, having a game handy in your car is always, you know, it's always handy in the sense that, oh, I didn't forget a game. I've got... X number of games you can choose from right here in my board game library. Just pops the hood, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, like just thinking about it, just like gives me, you know, the 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 saddening. Yeah, and the and pit in my stomach just is sick. Of, <laughs> sorry, I'm really sorry, but it's just no. You don't store board games like that. You it know, it goes back to what we said. You know, we got the players, we got the collectors, and then we got the kind of kind of middle ground. And you know, players might tend towards. Having efficiency over, you know, quality storage. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's, you know, each to their own. Kind of reminds me of when I was a kid. I used to, like, want to pack everything into my backpack, regardless of, you know, the, the size of it, and just kind of squash everything in there, just in case I, I want to play something, or just in case, you know, I need something. And talking about backpacks, actually, um, moving on to another thing is storage of board games when transporting which i think is also an interesting uh, uh, an important point to understand is that um everybody who has a lot of board games and knows the hassles of transporting them to and from let's say a board game convention or a board game event we've experienced this before don yeah there are specifically made bags and transporting bags for your board games that are made for a size of, of board game. You know, you can pack individual ones in there and they go up to a big size and there are medium sizes as well. And that is the perfect kind of bag to transport the board games. You know, it's, it's really nicely lined on the inside. It's got great carrying handles on the outside. Everything's nice and compact and you don't have to worry them fall, f falling over in your car. When you're driving around you know what i was thinking like a couple of months ago uh i met with a guy and he gave me gave me this idea to you um to get my hands on these storage uh backpacks that these fast food restaurants use to deliver food yeah actually that's um these these bags i'm i'm talking about are Pretty much, you know, pretty much the same. They're similar. They're, they're very they're similar. They're more dedicated. I know which ones you're talking about because I've seen them in conventions. I've seen people travel with them, especially if they want to exchange their board games or set up for board games in the convention, so on and so forth. Uh, I've seen those backpacks, yes. And they are really cool. However, it costs a penny or two. The idea on the sign here is getting one of those cooler-like bags you know, or temperature associated, but I don't even know what they're called, but it's those carrier bags that you see on the back of the uh, the scooter guy when they're delivering your food. So they they don't cost that much, believe it or not. And they're quite handy to run around with a couple of board games. Oh yeah, definitely. That will fit uh, quite a few board games in there. Hey, it beats uh, suitcases. It beats suitcases. Yeah, no, it's just... And again, I mean, yeah, we had a couple of conventions. We had a couple of um, board game events. And it's always the same problem, right? You know, loading them into the car, finding space. You know, sometimes we have to makeshift bags, boxes, and all the stuff. Carrying all that weight and just kind of seeing how we're going to put them around and then just transporting them back. It's an issue. You know, if you if you're that type of person like we do, that we're carrying board games in large quantities, yeah, it's something you should think about. We do suggest it's a good investment. Talking about investment, um, we mentioned a lot of things today on our episode and uh, and uh, about the well, maybe not proper, but some good tips and tricks on how to store board games, how to get everything out of uh, your collection and. We we do think that it's important to talk about this because of the investment value, right? We all know that board games are not cheap. A lot of special collector's editions, even some of, of uh, crowdfunding platforms, are not cheap at all. And they do come in great boxes with great artwork that we think is, is, is good to store. And that's why we wanted to talk about that today. Yeah, so uh, if you do want to get your hands on any board games, anything that is related to um, what we talk on, play up and chat here um you can go ahead and get your items from warmongergamesmota.com they've been with us since the beginning of everything we've been doing to be honest here on play up 
and they're giving us a discount code once again for 10 percent which is legends 9601 that's legends 9601 this starts from the 7th of may and expires to the 16th of may so you have that one week period where you can use this specifically on rpg products this time next week however they're giving us another code which is going to be dedicated towards board games so i'm really excited to have that and use it personally definitely that's <laughs> gonna be a good code to have yeah especially Def- with with uh, a lot of new board games is coming in with to be honest with you so i know he has like sheriff second edition now in which is something i want to get my hands on so i'm going to use that code for sure next week sheriff second edition that's that's uh, i'm looking forward to that that's a good one um moving on to a another sponsor we'd like to thank for this episode it's a uh, miniature corner studio they do uh, everything 3d printing you can send in your own files and you can get stuff custom 3d printed um, you can find them on facebook once again that's the miniature corner studio and they're offering you guys a uh, discount of 10 percent on any of the uh, 3d printing uh, that they offer just use the promo code playup21 that's PlayUp21 for a uh, 10% discount. And the next one we have is, and the last one we have is, the GiantsTower.com, where basically they do themed terrain, themed 3D printing, and all that. They're even expanding their services into doing uh, specific uh, custom-made models, if you wish. You can use the code, all uppercase, PlayUp15, that's PlayUp15, all one word, all uppercase, for 15% off your total bill. And this has been us uh, for another episode of Play Up and Chat. We hope you guys enjoyed everything about storage and well, keeping your collection the best that it can and pristine. Thank you for listening. You can uh, follow us on all our socials, Facebook, uh, Instagram, YouTube. We got a Twitter. There's TikTok. And of course, you can support us on patreon.com forward slash playupmt. And uh, we'll catch you in the next one, guys. Thanks for listening.